Oh, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I am all kind of trouble with my audio today. I hate when I pay for an app and then it doesn't want to work. You paid for it and it doesn't want to work. Have a Bluetooth recorder app was working fine for, I don't know, four or five years now. Almost all my audio was recorded on that unless I recorded it on my home computer. I go to try to use it today and it wants to act stupid. They updated it and now a Bluetooth recording app doesn't record with your Bluetooth headset. Now, how's that supposed to work? Anyway, <laughs> wanted to talk to you today about how much I hate Lordship Damnation. I told you, I'll say it again. I said it before, I'll say it again with the exception of referring to it for clarification purposes as Lordship Salvation. I will not call it that because it is a lie. That mess ain't never saved anybody. It's Lordship Damnation. It has damned more people to hell, probably than Roman Catholicism. Wait, I don't know. Roman Catholicism goes back further, but more people can hear that mess now. You know, back in the day, you didn't have television, didn't have radio. Before all of that, things had to be word of mouth and what was going on. And I, I don't know. I'm just convinced that that stuff is probably damn. More people to hell than Roman Catholicism, which is really all it is is Roman Catholicism with a, a fake Christian veneer. I mean, it's all about works. And sadly, I have had a family member who's been shipwrecked by that garbage. I don't know what the disconnect is with people. You can show them plainly in the scripture what King Jesus said. Simply believe on him and you've, in the, in the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, it says if you believe on Jesus, that you have fulfilled both the will of God and the work of God. And yet, you can show them scripture after scripture after scripture, like John ten twenty eight and 29. You can show them we're doubly covered, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, which means triply covered. You, you can just keep going, just Show them scripture after scripture, and yet they will still say three letters that I have come to hate when it comes to telling people the truth. And then they will say, but. And Sister Renee Rowland put up a, a video just a few days ago called Get Your Butt Out of the Way. And she's right. <laughs> you need to get your butt out of the way. It has no place. When when God Almighty, that's who King Jesus is. God manifests in the flesh. You can show them these scriptures and they'll still say, but. And I'm like, no, no, sweetheart. When Jesus says something, you don't get to say, but. You got to pull up a chair, sit down, and figure it out. Because he's God. You don't get to say, but. You're like, okay, Lord. Let me. I got to get a new understanding here because if this is true and you can't lie, then my understanding is wrong. And this is where this word that they always want to use and and take completely, not only out of context but out of its actual meaning, repent needs to come in, which means in the Greek metanoia is the word change your mind. They they have to mean contrition. And godly, and that's that's not what it is. It is not contrition or godly sorrow. It is to change your mind. And as Jesus said, it "Be uh, excuse me, be not faithless, but believing." They they can't. Because my dad said this when I was a little girl. He was so right. When you learn something wrong, it is very difficult to unlearn it. This the first thing you have to do is acknowledge that is wrong, and they won't do it because they're full of pride. Do you, can you imagine 
You got so lordship damnation after you received the plain, simple truth of the gospel. Hold on. You received the plain, simple truth of the gospel. And then you get sold on lordship damnation. And you spend the next 5, 10, 15, 20, as the song says, 25, 30. All right. <laughs> Years in this mess. And then you have to go, I was wrong. I got sold a bill of goods. I've been telling this to other people. And I've been wrong. So they can't admit it to themselves. Because then they have to go, wait a minute. Not only have I believed this bunk and junk, which would make you take a seat and do real self-examination on that. How did I fall for this mess? But now you got to go back and think about all the people that you done preached false doctrine to throughout the years and put a stumbling block in their way from getting born again and getting saved. Y'all go walk in and walk to a homosexual and tell him, you got to truly repent of your sin. And if you truly repent of your sin, God will save you. It's a lie. He'll save you if you never repent of your sin. If you never change your mind about sin, he'll save you. Oh, they don't like it. They'll say, oh, that's heretical. No, you're the one that's heretical. There are no conditions. Zero that are put on salvation other than simple faith in Christ. That's the only criteria. That you believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's it. That that is the payment for your sin. And if you'll be like a little child, a small little child. You know, I've often used this example and I'm going to use it again because it's so fitting. My little nephew one day, he was about three years old. He's a grown man now with his own children. And, you know, that's when they were so cute. You could sit them on the front seat in their little booster seat or whatever. And their little feet would dangle. You know, oh, so cute. And I promised him I had to put, do a bunch of errands this particular day. Run around to the mall and do some other stuff. And I said, if you be a good little boy and do everything I tell you today... No give auntie any problems. I'll buy you some ice cream when we're done. And soon as I said it, not, couldn't get the words out of my mouth. Once I said ice cream and you'll be a good little boy and you'll get, his eyes got big as two silver dollars. <laughs> and I said, so is that okay? You in agreement? Yeah. Little bobblehead. Yep. Good to go. I'm ready to go. As far as he was concerned, that was a done deal. Now, he's three years old. All he, he heard what I said, and he simply believed. If I be a good little boy, auntie going to buy me some ice cream. You know what's so great about Jesus? He don't even put the condition that you got to be good. He just said you got to believe. So I even put a stipulation on him that he, that he understood. My little nephew... And he said, that's all right. I, I can do that. Let's go. And all day, it was about, I didn't put him through too much torture. It was about both four to five hours. But for a little child, that's torture. <laughs> every, every like roughly every 30 minutes. Is the time yet, Auntie? No, not yet. Not yet, baby. He made it through. He, I think he even put his little hand on his forehead at one point. He's like, okay, I'm trying to endure this. And we get through the day, and I'm doing the last thing, and he's like, now I tea? I said, yeah, baby, now we can get some ice cream. Oh, he was so excited. But that's all he did was believe me. And that's all you have to do is believe Jesus. And you're saved. And they want to put all this other junk that belongs in the discipleship. And you know what? Let me tell you something else Christians are doing and they need to stop doing this. Now, yes, we should certainly encourage people absolutely in the faith and, and to uh, continue on with Christ as far as growing in the faith. Absolutely. But we don't have a right to put a stipulation conditional 
which is backloading salvation, saying, now, in order to prove that you're really a believer, you've got to do, have the works. It's a lie. Now, you should do, as I keep saying, everything to the less of salvation, meaning before you get born again, is simple faith in Christ to be saved. That's it. That's the one stipulation. After you're born again, everything is a should do, not a must do. They don't like that, but it's the truth. That's why you keep seeing in the King James, I can't help you with other versions, I don't read those. King James, it says, should do, should do, should, 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 or it uses words like your reasonable service. It's what is expected, but not required. When I say expected, it means, like it says, their reasonable service. It is the expectation that you do good, but it is not a requirement. Because if it was a requirement, we'd all be in trouble. Beloved, I know some of y'all got bit by the serpent called Lordship Damnation. But I promise you, you can let it go. You can let it go. You're not going to die and go to hell if you let go of Lordship Damnation. In fact, you're going to free yourself of a burden that is loathsome, that has been placed on you. And as, and as uh, Paul said, we gave no such commandment, no such requirement. But that's what they're doing. And they might as well be the devil himself coming in with that mess. Because once you start trying to keep uh, keep what you think is yourself, quote unquote, saved, it's a bunch of malarkey. The one that began the work in you, Christ Jesus the Lord, is the one who's going to finish the work in you. It's not even our work. And once people come to that full understanding, you know what you can do? You can do this. <sighs> you can begin to operate in the rest that God has established for you. You're supposed to cease from your own labor. Every false way in the world is about your own labor. But a relationship with King Jesus is not about your labor. It's about what he has done for you and what he will continue to do for you because you have become a child of the king. Heaven is your home. You're not trying to get to heaven. Every time I hear a believer say that, I, I really, I just, I'm incredulous. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places. You are supposed to be in agreement with Christ and with his word. But too many people want to sound religious. And they want to sound like they have this, this false humility. And only a human being could be as flawed to be so proud that they're so humble. We are walking, glaring contradictions. We have inside of us a sin nature that is warring against the spirit man who has been regenerated and is seated in heavenly places. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Change we can believe in. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things, not some, not most, not many, all things have become new. And what we spend the rest of our lives doing is disciplining our flesh, conforming and transforming our mind and renewing it by the word of God, growing in love, growing in grace. And that, beloved, is a labor that is unto Christ. You, you need to surrender that to him too. If you haven't, please do so. Because you need to understand that it is a labor that we do 
But if we blow it, we're covered by grace. And you just keep on keeping on in King Jesus. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen.